Last weekend, I invited everyone to live Lent together through participation in small groups. And I noted last week that the central focus of those small groups is to be praying together, especially with the sacred scriptures. And so what I want to do the last couple weekends before Lent begins is kind of begin to demonstrate the method of praying with the Bible that is utilized in those small groups. Traditionally, it's a method of prayer that is called Lexio Divina in Latin, which means divine reading. And so for Live Lent Together, we're using a shortened form of this Lexio called RAP. RAP is the abbreviation that we use. It's for the four parts of it, to write, reflect, apply, and pray. So I won't get into all four of those yet today. Um, even if you're not Even if you end up not being part of a small group, being able to pray with this form of prayer, with the sacred scriptures, is something that every single Catholic should be able to know how to do. Um, As I had mentioned, this is one of the easiest ways to be able to listen to God's voice in our life, is praying with the sacred scriptures. I myself use it for my own prayer. I also use it when I'm praying with the daily scriptures, the Sunday readings as I prepare for my homilies. So today I want to focus on the very first thing that we do when we begin to pray. We always must begin with this, whether we're doing Lexio or Rap or whatever it is we're doing in our life, this is a good practice for us. Um, In Lexio, the first part, this first step is called the Invocatio Spiritus Sancti, which in Latin means to invoke the Holy Spirit. To invoke means to call upon, to, to begin by asking for the assistance, the help of the Holy Spirit. And we, we see how today's readings really support this. There's kind of a common theme in these readings all about being able to listen to and to follow the wisdom of God. The first reading acknowledges that every day we have various decisions that are before us to choose life or death, good or evil, it says. We need to understand what it is that's coming from God so that we can avoid the misery that comes from from sin and evil and find the happiness that comes from following God. St. Paul, though, in the second reading, says that we don't always easily recognize what God's wisdom is because his wisdom can at times appear to be mysterious and hidden. And that's why the psalm today instructs, asks that we be instructed by God to learn his ways, that our eyes may be opened to observe his laws. St. Paul, again, in that second reading, he quotes the prophet Isaiah saying, Well, whatever eye hasn't seen, an ear hasn't heard, and what has not entered the human heart, God has revealed it to us through the Spirit. So it's saying that it's through the Spirit, through calling upon the Holy Spirit, that God reveals his wisdom and his will for our lives. He says that the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. And so if we wish to be able to hear God's voice speaking to us each day, in particular when we pray with the sacred scriptures, then we need to begin by invoking, by calling upon the assistance of the Holy Spirit, asking Him to reveal to us what God is saying. And this is really, really important, and that's why I'm putting so much emphasis on this really first step when it comes to prayer, because I've noticed that even those who have, and have learned how to pray with the scriptures, to do that, that, that rap or lexio, sometimes we get into that habit of wanting to jump right on in into, into what we're doing. We forget to prepare. So we wanna, we're going to read the scriptures, so we just start right off and start reading it. But wait, before we start reading the passage, first call upon the Holy Spirit. Ask for his assistance to help me to know what it is that God is going to say. And I even do this myself sometimes. I forget the first step. I, you know, let's say, for example, I'm looking at the next day's readings and going to decide what I'm going to talk about at, at Mass. And I go right into the reading. And then I wonder, how come I'm not getting any kind of inspiration and I don't know what I'm supposed to say as part of my homily? Well, silly me, I didn't spend time talking to the Lord and asking for his help for the Holy Spirit to help me to hear what he wants me to say. So how do we do this? How do we call upon the Holy Spirit? Well, it's really not that difficult. It can be just as simple as, come Holy Spirit. (laughs) We can use our own words. We can say something like, Holy Spirit, help me to be able to hear your voice as I read this passage of Scripture. Um, There's some wonderful prayers that 
the church gives to us, that, that the saints give. Uh, for those of you that may be part of the CC movement, you may be familiar with one such prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle them in the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's a beautiful prayer to the Holy Spirit. It's a little bit long. You might not have it memorized, but you could put it in there in your Bible if you're going when you, uh, or your devotional when you're going to begin reading the scriptures. St. Augustine also has a beautiful prayer that he used before reading the Bible. He said, let your scriptures be my chaste delight. O Lord, perfect me and reveal those pages to me. See, your voice is my joy. Give me what I love. May the inner secrets of your words be laid open to me when I knock. This I beg by our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. These are the treasures I seek in your books. So he's being very explicit there, saying to God, I want to hear your voice. May I be ready to to listen? Because God's thinking is not always the way that we think about things. And if we don't call upon the Holy Spirit's guidance, we could go about doing things throughout our day our own way, which isn't necessarily God's way. And without asking for the Holy Spirit's guidance, we could fall into the trap, even when we're reading the scriptures, of reading into the Bible the things that we want to hear, rather than listening to what God really is saying to us. That we could, in a sense, twist his words to kind of confirm what we want rather than being open to his will. We could even pay attention just to the parts that are easy to follow, that we like in the scriptures, and ignore those parts that would require us to make some kind of change in our life. And I think today's gospel is a great example of this, because Jesus has really challenging things. He takes a number of the Ten Commandments, and he kind of lifts them up to a higher level. He says, you've heard, you shall not kill. But that means a bit more than that. It doesn't just mean don't murder somebody. It also means don't be angry with them. Those hurtful, biting words that we might say to someone's face or behind their back. The things that we are thinking about them in our mind, the interior resentment, the lack of forgiveness. We'll be held accountable, he says, for all those things. Unless we seek forgiveness from God and also seek to reconcile ourselves with each other. He says, you've heard it said, you're not to commit adultery. But Jesus says that extends even inside, into our interior thoughts. That what do we allow to come into our minds through the internet, through social media, through TV, through, through movies? Where do, our, where do we allow our eyes to linger? Do we allow impure thoughts to entertain us? Jesus says that if we recognize something is an occasion of sin, that we need to act to cut that out of our life. And this, this part of praying for the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that we can hear his words, will enable us then to act upon them. The early church father, Origen, he he prayed in this way, Lord, inspire me to read your scriptures and to meditate upon them day and night. I beg you to give me real understanding of what I need, that I in turn may put these precepts into practice. So that's the next step. We call upon the Holy Spirit and we ask him for his help to read the scripture, to understand his voice in our world, and to help him, help us to put it into practice. St. Francis de Sales says that our prayer needs to lead to the practice of the things that we pray about. Otherwise, he said, if we just think about virtues all the time, but we never actually strive to live the virtues, it can actually make us proud. Because we think that we're holy, because we're thinking about holiness, but we haven't actually done anything to become holy. We still have the same faults that we had before. And so that's why we want to make sure that we do like what is said in the psalm, that we ask the Lord to instruct us so that we can observe his laws. So that's the first step of prayer. We pray by first calling upon the Holy Spirit, asking for his assistance to be able to hear his voice and then also to be able to act upon what we hear. So next week, I'll continue looking at the next steps of how to pray with sacred scripture. But I encourage you during this this coming week 
to practice that, to call upon the Holy Spirit, whether it's in a time of prayer where we're praying with the scriptures or just at different moments throughout the day, we can always call upon his assistance. I want to end with a final prayer from St. John Chrysostom, which really kind of summarizes a bunch of our, the readings that we have today. O Lord Jesus Christ, open the eyes of my heart that I might hear your word and understand and do your will. For I am a sojourner upon earth. Hide not your commandments from me, but open my eyes that I may perceive the wonders of your law. Speak to me the hidden and secret things of your wisdom. On you do I set my hope, my God, that you shall enlighten my mind and the understanding with the light of your knowledge, not only to cherish these things which are written, but to do them, that in reading they may serve for my restoration, enlightenment, and sanctification for the salvation of my soul and the inheritance of everlasting life.